हेलो नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर ट्वेल्व ऑफ पुस्तकालय वाला पॉडकास्ट टुडे वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग ऑन द सेम पाथ दैट वी स्टार्टेड येस्टडे दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ऑलवेज कंटिन्यू ऑलवेज डिवेलप न्यू थिंग्स ऑलवेज अंडरस्टैंड न्यू पार्ट्स एंड न्यू एरियाज एंड न्यूज एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिकॉर्डेड वन फुल एपिसोड ऑफ दिस बट द रिकॉर्डिंग वॉज रियली बैड एंड आई डोंट लाइक इट एंड आई एम गोन रिकॉर्ड इट अगैन so it might um, i mean you won't feel any difference but i will uh there are three characteristics first of all let me just recap we are discussing about the <clears throat> altered states of consciousness and how and why are they called the higher states of consciousness and do they deserve that title and does any state of consciousness deserve that title Uh, are any others any state of consciousness higher or lower than any other this is what is being argued against in this paper some parts of some characteristics of that state of consciousness are definitely higher and more uh, in, in some ways but it's they are lower in some other ways so there are three characteristics that these guys um the writers of the paper are uh, talking about these characteristics first of all the writer of the paper writers of the paper are tim bain and all and olivia carter and they talk about first characteristic which is the sensory perception the second characteristic is the cognitive function and the third one is experience of unity we have kind of touched upon all three in the podcast before so if you want to go <clears throat> and understand all three you can go back to that podcast but today we will start with sensory perception this is the only thing we'll discuss in this podcast in this episode sensory perception is the the um it's basically what you see in your senses how is that differing different for normal people for a waking consciousness normal consciousness to um, compared to the altered state of consciousness uh, on psilocybin and lsd and well the the <clears throat> perceptually um first person experience the first person reports of visual image imagery and perceptual meaning is this that it it, it is increased people report that everything is more visual and more vivid um and it it enhances dream like imagery um and uh, high um similarity with dream like reports there are different um terms here which i am not really familiar with but this is one <clears throat> first person report that everything is more vivid and um there is just much more to see the first um there are two different types also he had um stated the first one is elementary imagery which is like i could see color in total darkness or with my closed eyes and the second is complex imagery for example dreams and fantasy and the pictures from the past are extremely clear right and um this is this is the first person side and the other first person perspective subjective perspective is the changed meaning of percepts that um, the the objects around the person or the subject are engaging the subject more emotionally than usual which is also um my own experience on such uh, states of consciousness that things do mundane things that you had thought were mundane um and just a part of normal life just seem more um emotional engage me emotionally more than usual especially animals Uh, dogs and cats they were really you know hanging out with your uh, your a pet dog and a cat it's just fantastic on such uh states of consciousness because you just feel so much more um, and th- that's the, that's the question from scientific point of view is is that really 
helping the whole connection with the person or the object or is it, is it just all in your mind and then there are some ways to test it the first test they did was first of all just let me get in get this through one of the very interesting um, people in this uh, first person view field was uh, Aldous Huxley who has written many books on this uh, state of consciousness especially uh, this one paragraph that I'll read is in heaven and hell <clears throat> first and most important is the experience of light everything seen by those who visit the mind's antipodes is brilliantly illuminated and seems to shine from within all colors are intensified to a pitch far beyond anything seen in the normal state and at the same time the mind's capacity for recognizing fine distinctions of tone and hue is notably heightened he says that he says that it's notably heightened to recognize the fine distinctions between tone and hue but that's completely unsupported by evidence when you do tests on people's um, uh, perception of color and when can they actually differentiate between hues in laboratory settings they fail to do that so there is no evidence that it, it increases but the the first person perspective does states that it increases so how do you make up the, how do you reconcile with this fact um, i'm not sure and we should come back to that later on but the second thing the second part is the bandwidth of consciousness which states that how much sensory data is actually coming through and here there is this very interesting new test that they do not new test but this is new to me um this is this is how they test things like these there is this test of sensory um um how do you how do i start explaining this okay startle reflex there is a st natural startle reflex in in people right when you're sitting and there is a noise loud noise you get startled that response can be captured and measured and how startled you get through the magnitude of eye blink response in humans and there are other ways to test it in rats and stuff so this startle reflex can be measured how how startled you got now when you have a pre pulse before the startle re, startle stimulus there is a there is a stimulus before that just before that called a pre pulse when that happens the startle reflex is reduced in is inhibited so this is called pre pulse inhibition this is all about waking consciousness i have i haven't added psychedelic state yet this is just a regular normal psychological test done in this field where you test that uh, because of this pre pulse there is an inhibition and this is called sensory gating sensory gating <clears throat> on wikipedia page is uh, is this sensory gating describes neurological processes of filtering out redundant or unnecessary stimuli in the brain from all possible environmental stimuli so because of this pre pulse the brain has inhibited the actual startled reflex because it got primed to get that so this is the sensory gating can also be measured accordingly now on psychedelics this sensory gating is reduced the pre pulse inhibition has less of an effect on the individual they are still startled almost as much as they would be without the inhibition when they are on psychedelic drugs psychedelics when they are in this state of consciousness um the sensory gating is reduced which can be seen as an evidence that more data is coming through into conscious um awareness more data more sensory information is making it through to conscious awareness there are other lines of research on this point but uh, so we have we have two different 
first person views one is that you can differentiate and segregate between and you have heightened sense of differences which is unsupported by evidence but the other first person report which says that you have we you get uh, a lot more data and uh, it's you are inundated with uh, constant um, um sensory input and the first person reports are like everything around me was happening so fast that i no longer could follow what was going on and this kind of first person point of view is actually supported by evidence uh, as at least in this sense that uh, sensory gating is reduced on psychedelics now um this is the first characteristic the sensory perception on psychedelics and it seems that it's kind of is supported by evidence at least some part in summary i'm reading the summary with respect to the subjective experience of the psychedelic state there is a there is compelling evidence for an increase in the intensity and volume of sensory information experienced at any given time when we consider objective measures of perceptual function there is also good support for reduced perceptual suppression leading to a real increase in the permeability of bandwidth of consciousness however there is less objective support for improvement in either brightness or color sensitivity despite repeated self reports suggesting that psychedelics enhance brightness and color perception so summary is um, this this is a summary and we'll end here to for today except i'll just state my own um, understanding and my views when i re- read these things first of all i under, i learned quite a few things new ways of uh, doing experiments new ways of conducting um, experiments getting the data um and i like such uh, a, creativity how how did people come up with pre process uh, sorry pre what what is that term pre uh, god damn it what is that term ppi what is where is it have i lost it have i left it somewhere am i pre pulse inhibition pre pulse inhibition pre pulse inhibition who came up with that and how did they come up with that and to uh, and sensory gating is something that is interesting to test now because when uh, sensory gating is um like it's kind of like when you hear a joke you laugh when you hear the joke again you don't laugh as hard because the effect that joke had the second time was clearly not the same because you were pre-primed pre-primed is that a word you were primed there is no such thing as pre-primed maybe pre-pre-primed or something you were primed your mind is already ready there is no um there is no um what is that word there is no unexpected unexpectedness you know so um this is one way to test that expectation and expectation in perception and those things are actually very fascinating in the new paradigm of uh, consciousness studies prediction mind is bayesian prediction machine and a lot of uh, similar work is being done by anil seth and th- these th- these are very fascinating to me the f- the 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 actual experimental methodologies uh, just fun to un- think about and fun to f- figure out how did they come up with that who was the first person who was this genius person who who, who was this creative guy probably one uh, probably not one person maybe many people uh, or or a gohul uh, i said guy so i should 
say maybe maybe it was a um, it can be anyone uh, i'll stop here i think i'm i'm finished with the, today's uh, i'm done see you tomorrow